You have to say the ceasefire in the Middle East is a very fragile affair, even more fragile tonight. With claims from both sides, it's already been breached. So here we have a war with no winners, where hundreds of civilians have died, where the damage bill will be in the billions. For my first 60 Minutes assignment, I've been in Israel and Lebanon over the last two weeks. I've seen the fear, despair and destruction, and also the blind faith, the passion of the young, especially young Australians I met in both countries. They've taken sides, taken up arms. They're ready to fight and die for their beliefs. It's hard to believe that just 34 days of war produced this. These were the bustling neighbourhoods of Beirut's southern suburbs, the heartland of Hezbollah. The Israeli Air Force gave no mercy. We feel very unfair, mate, you know, what's been happening to these people here, you know? Innocent people are dying here. Civilians. You know what I mean? We're being shown around by Hayes Salah and his brother Abraham. Lebanese Australians from Sydney. They came here on a holiday, but were so moved by seeing the carnage, they'd be ready to take up arms for Hezbollah. Now if, I was, if someone came up to me and asked me, oh, would you go and fight for your country? I'm, I wouldn't say no, I wouldn't think twice. I'd go right you wouldn't right. be prepared to sign up for Hezbollah? I'll, I'll be prepared to sign up. I would, I've seen all this and what's going on with the kids. It breaks your heart. You, you'd sign up for Hezbollah? I'd sign up. I'd sign up. I won't think twice. I know I'm doing a good cause. And if, uh, and if I went to die in action, it doesn't bother me. Do you realise the Hezbollah military wing is officially listed as a terrorist organisation in Australia? There was no warning. We didn't see or hear the planes above. In the space of two minutes, at least 20 thunderous explosions. Hi, sir. Two streets away. They're saying two streets away. It certainly sounds like it's a lot closer than that. In the dying hours of the war, with the clock ticking towards the ceasefire, Israel unleashed one of the biggest bombing raids of all. The targets, Israel claims, were not civilians, but buildings used to hide Hezbollah rockets and ammunition. Witnessing the war in close-up, you start to see the dilemma Israel faced here. Who were the people running for their lives? Civilians or Hezbollah fighters making their getaway to fight another day? Across the border in Israel, we find the source of those bombs. Israeli jets flew hundreds of bombing sorties every day of the conflict. We keep hearing over and over the mantra from Israel that what separates it from its enemies is how they choose the targets. The Hezbollah, they say, are terrorists because they choose civilians, not the military. But Israel insists it takes great care in working out what to bomb using this camera on planes like this. And up there in the photographer's seat, making that life and death choice is another young Australian. And we're not playing games here, you know? This is the army, these are missions, this is what we do. She's an aerial scout with an Aussie accent and she agreed to talk about her work, but because of Air Force secrecy rules, wasn't allowed to reveal her identity. What if you found out later that one of the targets you chose contained women and children? Listen, if you're talking about the psychology of I can sleep well at night or, or how I feel afterwards, then I can tell you that I know that every everything that the Air Force does and everything that the IDF does is trying to um, prevent the hurt of civilians and to prevent hurting innocent people. Casualties happen, happen in war. We are at war here. For the past 34 days, the Israelis have been throwing everything at Hezbollah from launching sites close to Lebanon.
As we travelled along the border, Israel's military muscle was on full display. As awesome as it looks, it failed to crush an enemy that was both tenacious and surprisingly well armed. It's no secret the Israelis were stunned at Hezbollah's capacity to fight. I can't tell you exactly where we are because the Israeli Defence Force don't want to give away the position so close to the border of Lebanon. But behind the gun of one of these things is a young Aussie. Let's go and meet him. Sergeant Noah Rappaport was born in Perth. Thank you. But his family decided to make a new life in Israel. Army service is compulsory for young Israelis. And Noah ended up in the Vampire Tank Brigade, which, when we met him, was poised to attack. Wouldn't you rather be back on Cottesloe Beach? No, <laughs> tell you the truth, no. Um, you, cho you choose this instead? I choose this because I feel that it has, it has meaning. I have a responsibility to a people and, and to a country. I have a responsibility to Israel and its citizens. And um, you can't live in a, you can't have a normal life when you're, when you're bombed. Nothing seems normal in this part of the world for outsiders like us. Nineteen-year-old private Adia Pelek is another young Australian who's answered the call in Israel. He's training as a gunner. It's very surreal. Um, no, sometimes like I'm lying in bed and I'm thinking about it, um, and I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very surreal. You, you think where you've come from and where you are now on the other side of the world. Um, Look, you still the beach life of Sydney. Um, yeah, no, it's very different. Adia left Sydney just seven months ago to join his sister in Jerusalem. This young soldier in the making wasn't even born when Israel's tanks last rolled into Lebanon in 1982. It's very difficult because Israel's not fighting against any country. It's not fighting against any actual army. It's fighting against a, a ter terrorist movement, Hezbollah, which is a recognised it's in the world, in the whole world is recognised as a terrorist movement. We target terrorists, we target um, anyone who targets us. They target civilians. They shoot into populated areas with the intention of harming civilians. And that's the number one, you know, that's the number one difference. In Back in Beirut, when the smoke cleared, we went to see where those 20-odd bombs landed. It was astonishing. That two-minute barrage brought down 13 residential high-rise buildings. The locals told us there were families buried in the rubble, but no one knew how many. Massive killing! Massive killing! They did it for what? Hezbollah's official spokesman, Hussein Nabulsi, says the Israeli attacks killed families, not fighters. What they can do is they can come with F-16 from high above in the skies and hit civic, civic targets. And this is what exactly happened in, in Beirut. 1,100 Lebanese died in the close to five weeks of fighting. Every night, Loved ones gather in Beirut's Martyrs Square to honour them. Civilian deaths far outnumbered Hezbollah casualties. On that score, Hezbollah is claiming both a military and moral victory because they killed more Israeli soldiers than civilians. 118 Israeli soldiers in all. They came to fight and look how much loss they have suffered. The best well-trained soldiers, Israeli soldiers, came to fight us, but to no avail. 
you're smiling at their losses? As long as uh, we have the uh, upper hand, we can hit Israel very hard. Of course, I am happy. I am extremely happy. I am extremely happy. You killed twice the number of civilians the way as, their, as their fighters. That's not the way it works. First Isaac all, Herzog is a member of Israel's fighters. security cabinet. His side, too, is acutely aware that this has now become very much a propaganda war. First of all, we've killed about 500 of their fighters, and they lie about it. Secondly, but you've killed a thousand of their civilians. With all due respect, we've warned them time and again, move out of the area. But, Minister, the fact is they have succeeded in targeting the military, haven't they? According they haven't to, targeted according to these the figures, military. You're wrong in the way you analyze According it. to these figures, they're killing two soldiers for every civilian death. But that's death. not the way you analyze war. They've killed soldiers who've gone into Lebanon to uproot their infrastructure in Lebanon. But they fired over 2,500 missiles on northern Israel. Israel had never come under such sustained attack on its soil. Hundreds of Hezbollah rockets hit its northern cities right up to the ceasefire. Part of the activities are happening over here is that we're, uh, we're monitoring actually what the media is saying. A large part of the communications effort is actually to know what the media is saying. Bunkered down in this media war room, it was the difficult job of another Australian, Captain Guy Spiegelman, to put a positive spin on the war for Israel. I'm proud of the way uh, Israel is acting now. I think that it's, it's maybe hard to understand from an Australian point of view because we're not used to this kind of terror in Australia, but may maybe we've got a taste of it. Maybe the Australians got a taste of it um, in Bali. Well, we, we feel that all the time over here in Israel. So I'm proud that I'm part of the, the Defence Forces that is trying to put a stop to that kind of terror. Every Israeli-Australian we met here spoke of their pride, their sacred connection with Israel, and the right of the Jewish people to live peacefully. Seeing the sheer beauty of old Jerusalem, getting a sense of the spiritual pull of this place, you begin to understand what draws these young Australians here. But where is their allegiance now? I've decided to make my life over here. Um, if the shoe were on the other foot, if Australia tomorrow was at war, would you be prepared to come back to Australia and sign up for our army? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I believe in freedom of people. I'm, I'm Israeli and I also am Australian and I believe that you have to fight for freedom. So you would be consistent? I would be consistent, yes. Without a doubt. Would you consider fighting for Australia? Definitely. Definitely. Um, so it rubs both ways for you? Yeah, definitely. If you signed up for Hezbollah, you would be officially working against the Australian government. You could go to jail for that. Why? Well, because I think they're a terrorist group. Because Let they're a registered they terrorist group. Let them think what they want. Hezbollah is not a terrorist group. Hezbollah fights for its rights. Hezbollah fights for its people, fights for its land, its country. It's for well, its own land. How can you say it's a terrorist group? What do you think of young Australian Jews who sign up to fight for Israel? If they, if they want to come and die, why not? Simple as that. As simple as that. Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.